When we see a helicopter in flight, we are usually conscious of only one movement of the blades. That is, their circular or rotational movement. In actuality, however, there are four distinct movements or actions which are characteristic of rotor blades. There is rotation, of course, the movement of the blades around the mast. There is feathering, the movement of the blades around a spanwise axis to change their angle of incidence or pitch. There is flapping, the vertical movement of the blades, either up or down, from their established plane of rotation. And there is hunting, the leading ahead or lagging behind of the blades, from their normal position during their cycle of rotation. To see how each of these four actions contributes to the flight of a helicopter, we will examine them one at a time. The first of these actions is rotation. Rotation, of course, is caused by the engine operating through the mast, except in the case of auto-rotation. In any case, the effect of rotation is to create a relative wind. The relative wind is constantly changing direction in order to remain at a right angle to the blade as it revolves around the mast. Thus, the blade, during its entire cycle of rotation, is reacting to the relative wind to produce lift. Since it is lift which makes it possible for a helicopter to fly, rotation then is the basic movement or action of a rotor blade. Without rotation, all other actions of the blade would have no significance. But rotation alone is not enough. We also need some method of controlling flight. Any movement of the helicopter, either vertical or horizontal, is accomplished through feathering. Feathering includes any movement of the blade around its spanwise axis as indicated by the dotted line. Such movement alters the angle of incidence, or as it is sometimes called, the pitch angle of the blade, and changes the amount of lift which the blade will produce. Feathering is accomplished through either the collective pitch control or the cyclic control. Any change in the collective pitch changes the pitch of each blade of the rotor in the same amount through its complete revolution. This enables the pilot to vary the total amount of lift being produced and gives him vertical control of the helicopter. By increasing the collective pitch, he can make the craft rise. By decreasing the collective pitch, he can make the craft descend, up or down, as he chooses. A change in the cyclic control, on the other hand, increases the pitch of one blade and at the same time decreases the pitch of the other blade an equal amount. Therefore, it does not affect the overall lift which is being produced. Instead, it increases the lift on one half of the rotor disc and decreases the lift on the other half. This will cause the rotor disc to tilt in the direction of the lesser lift. And since a helicopter moves in the direction in which the disc is tilted, the cyclic control provides us with a means of controlling the direction of flight. Feathering of the blades, then, and the resulting modifications of lift provide us with both vertical and horizontal control of the helicopter. In directional flight, however, a helicopter is subject to what we call dissymmetry of lift, that is, a blade during the advancing half of its cycle of rotation tends to produce more lift than it does during the retreating half. 
The result is a tendency for the helicopter to roll over on its back. To combat this tendency, rotor blades ordinarily are allowed to flap. That is, they are allowed to move up or down as necessary in order to equalize the lift being produced by the advancing and retreating blades. Flapping is usually permitted in one of two ways. In the fully articulated rotor system, a hinge is placed near the root of the blade. This hinge permits the blade to flap up or down at will. In the semi-rigid system using two-bladed rotors, flapping is permitted by the teeter-totter action of the rotor head on its universal mount. One blade flaps up as the other flaps down. In any case, during flight, flapping is inherently limited by centrifugal force. That is, the amount a blade will flap up or down is a compromise between centrifugal force, which tends to hold the blade straight out from the hub, and lift forces, which tend to raise the blade upward. When the lift forces are stronger, the blade will flap up. When centrifugal force is stronger than lift, the blade will flap down. The net result of flapping is an equalization of lift between the advancing and retreating rotor blades. Thus, flapping overcomes the tendency of a helicopter to roll over, making directional flight possible. And this brings us to the final action or movement, which is characteristic of rotor blades, hunting. Hunting occurs only during directional flight and is the direct result of flapping. This is what happens. As the advancing blade flaps up, its center of gravity, which is indicated by the dot, is moved slightly nearer to the axis of rotation, which is the mast. Because of the Coriolis effect, this center of gravity attempts to maintain the same momentum which it had when it was farther away from the axis of rotation. In so doing, it tends to speed up the blade and causes it to lead ahead. At the same time, there is an opposite effect on the retreating blade. As the blade flaps down, the center of gravity is moved farther away from the axis of rotation. Because of the Coriolis effect, this center of gravity tends to slow down which causes the retreating blade to slow down or lag behind. In other words, there is always a tendency for the advancing blade when it flaps up to gain speed and to lead ahead. In the meantime, the retreating blade, when it flaps down, loses speed and will lag behind. Lead ahead, lag behind. Lead ahead, lag behind. This variation in lead and lag during each cycle of rotation may amount to several degrees. To avoid the inevitable stresses which would result from this constant flexing of the blades, one of two methods is usually employed. In the fully articulated rotor system, a hinge is placed at the base of the blade. This lagging hinge permits the blade to lead ahead or lag behind as necessary. This is the method generally employed on multi-bladed rotors to permit hunting. In a semi-rigid rotor system, however, hunting is provided for in another way. The universal mount is designed so that it has a swinging or hammock type action which enables it to compensate for the lead and lag tendencies of the blades. In both cases, the provision which is made for hunting helps the blades to avoid the stresses which might otherwise result in fatigue failure.
This completes our examination of the four characteristic actions of a rotor blade. In summarizing, then, we can say rotation creates the relative wind, which is essential to the production of lift. Feathering gives the pilot both vertical and horizontal control. Flapping enables the helicopter to escape the unpleasant consequences of dissymmetry of lift, but it also produces hunting. Consequently, provision for hunting is necessary to prevent the recurrent stresses, which would otherwise result from the lead and lag tendencies. While certain movements, then, may seem to make a greater contribution than others, Helicopter flight as we know it today would be impossible if rotor blades were not able to perform each and every one of their four characteristic actions.